Hello and welcome to my July wrap up. I'm Monica and let's just get into the seven books that I read this month. But before I get into the books, if you would want to give me a huge thumbs up and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more booktube videos from me, you could go right ahead and do that and I would really much appreciate if you did. The first book I'm going to be mentioning this month is a book that I should have mentioned in last month's wrap up but at the time I was reading this book I didn't think I would DNF it but I did and it was The Vanishing Stair by Maureen Johnson which is the second book in the Truly Devious series. Let me just say that um, I usually don't DNF books since I like to give a book a chance but I think with this one I was not feeling any strong connection to any of the characters and frankly I didn't really care about the mystery and since this is a second book I would think I would already have some sort of care for the characters but I honestly didn't so once I got to like chapter 8 I was like I'm not really feeling this book so I put it down and I went on to my next read which was a historical romance and this is A Rogue of One's Own by A.B. Dunmore. I did rate it a 3.5 out of 5 stars. And this one's another second book in a series in the A League of Extraordinary Women series. And it's following Bringing Down the Duke. So this one does follow the same formula as its first book, following a different female character through a historical period. And mostly in this historical romance series, we are following women suffragists who are fighting for women's rights and the right to vote. In Aroga One's Own, we're following Lucy who is a woman suffragist and she's really determined to pave a path for more political power for women and also she roots for gender equality. But in her way to achieve her goals is a rogue Tristan. This book was particularly long, it's around like 450 pages. I really like the expansion on the historical sides of things that we did receive in this book but it was very long-winded and I think that's my issue with historical romance, historical fiction books is that the history part can get a little bit uninteresting for me to continue reading since I'm not much of a history person but I still like to pick up historical reads. However with Lucy and Tristan we do have really nice interactions between them where they are disguising their attraction to each other from afar and it was really nice to see their two different points of views in this book. The romance is well explored and we do see how their relationship grows and it was quite believable how their intensity and the chemistry between them it does build up and it was really fun to see an outrageous offer that Tristan gives to Lucy and how she deals with that. But overall I was really satisfied with this romance although the slow parts were from the historical part of this book I still really enjoyed this one. My next read it was also a romance but this is a contemporary romance and it was Something Wilder by Christina Lauren and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 and this one is actually my first Christina Lauren read. I definitely don't regret picking this one up. Something Wilder is a second chance romance with a adventure twist. All the characters in this book felt real with their problems and that affects how the main couple interact with each other given how they haven't seen each other for years. We are following Lily who is a determined woman who is trying to get back on her feet after struggling to make ends meet with her tourist and treasure hunting business that is not really making much for her. Lily grapples with feelings of abandonment but she's not one to allow that to get in her way in her life. Enter Leo and this guy is a flame, an old flame that comes back into Lily's life unexpectedly and they kind of reconcile but now they are stuck together on one of these treasure hunting tourist trips. Leo is also a man who's dealt with hardships in his life but their reunion with each other is filled with action, suspense, and romance. Although some sequences of events you need a suspension of disbelief because there were a couple action scenes in this book which were a little outrageous but I'll still take it for what it was and it was really entertaining to read what happened to our characters. Although one great point about their relationship with Leo and Lily was there was healthy adult communication between them. I also really enjoyed their journey back to each other, working through their past emotions and 
also whatever has been going on in their lives at this point. So I will be reading a lot more of Christina Lauren in the future and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, with reading a lot of romance books at that point in the month, I want to switch things up a bit and I picked up a thriller and this was Take Your Breath Away by Linwood Barley and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. So in this one, we're following Andrew whose wife Bree mysteriously vanishes after he returns from a weekend fishing trip. And six years later, Breeze shows up back in town again and this woman does not have any recollection of what has happened. Now the police are suspecting Andrew again of possibly whatever has happened with his wife although his current partner Jane doesn't know anything about his mysterious past but he is grappling with the question is his wife Bree actually back and what the heck has happened to her after six years of being missing. So this book was really well paced and it gives you a lot of hints along the way to make your guesses about what has happened or who might have done something to Brie and if this Brie woman who has shown back in town is actually Brie. There was a lot of guesswork and I was surprisingly correct about a lot of it so I'm kind of happy about that. <laughs> I felt so smart but this book wasn't entirely predictable so I was surprised at some revelations that happened and the reasons behind the entire mystery was not what I expected it to be. I think it was a matter of one character in this book thinking that another character in this book was very very important and would do anything to keep what was in their life the same way. But this book did keep me up late at night to finish it. There were a few convenient twists and turns but I still really enjoyed this mystery and if you're looking for like a slow burn mystery and trying to figure out what is going on in this town, I would really highly recommend this one. I switched genres again and went back to romance and this romance book was Book Lovers by Emily Henry and I rate this one a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Book Lovers, we're following Nora Stevens who is a literary agent and she's reluctantly dragged to a small town in North Carolina for a small sister's month-long trip. Her sister Libby hopes that Nora will have that small town romance and fall in love. Although the only person that Nora seems to keep on running into is Charlie who is a book editor from the city and sparks fight. Book lovers definitely remind me of Beach Read a lot with the small town aspect with the rivals to lovers, also with both main characters working in the publishing industry and that with high romantic tensions between them. The good things about this book would include that the small town setting really did have Hallmark movie vibes. I really enjoyed that. And we also got to see an actual use of their jobs and the poke fun of the literary tropes that they see throughout their careers and also the banter humor and there was a happily ever after ending. Nora herself isn't a woman who is easily swayed a lot. She's what one may describe as high maintenance but Nora still has heart and she's quite firm in who she is and she just forges on ahead in her career and her life. What did turn me off about this book was that Nora noticed something was up and something was wrong with her sister Libby but she didn't say anything about it to her sister. She was like, oh, it's fine. And she just like waved it off. But like Nora noticed something was wrong, I think up to three, four times before anything came about of her speaking to her sister and asking like, what is going on with your husband and your kids? However, this lack of communication is not only resting on Nora, but it goes both way between the sisters of Nora and Libby, not communicating but the main conflict in this book was balanced between Nora's family life drama as well as her internal conflict of wanting to be with Charlie or not wanting to be with him. Charlie himself as a love interest isn't the most exciting guy ever to be a love interest but he's stable and I think that's what Nora needs in her life so they really balance each other. I was really invested in their hate to love relationship in this book and I still will want to read more of Emily Henry books. So my next read was a YA thriller, mystery thriller and this was Ace of Spades by Farida Abiki Deime and I rated this one a 4 out of 5 stars. So um, Ace of Spades takes place at a private academy and we're following Devin and Chiamaka. So they are the two top students in the school but they both get their deepest darkest secrets blasted out into their school and this puts their future at risk. 
And the person who's behind these tests are relentless and will do anything to stop these two students from achieving the futures that they worked so hard for. This was a really thrilling YA mystery and an excellent debut book. And the person behind these texts are known as ACES. So ACES is targeting the only two black students in this private academy, which leads to very important topics that are being discussed in this book. And this is also a content warning. So there was discussion of institutionalized racism, bullying, really harsh, severe bullying we see in this book. We also see white supremacy and homophobia as well. But we also do get fantastic LGBTQ rap and POC rap. So once the main characters learn about the target harassment against them, they are appalled themselves and at first deny that it is leading up to anything deeper than what it was. But they soon understand that it has a more deeper meaning behind it and they then fight back against their bullies, which I was like rooting for them to fight back against this aces person. And Chiamaka and Devin, they are both resilient in their own unique ways. With Chiamaka, she's really straightforward and she's a girl that does not back down. Devin is a little bit more soft-hearted. He's more in more connection with his emotions. He's still determined to get the justice. Both of them are really strong characters, but they also have their own flaws. But they learn to gain their courage to stand up for what is right and stand up for it themselves. My only main issue with this book was that in the middle part, it got a little bit slow, but after revelation and secrets were being revealed, it did pick up after you get past that slow part in the middle. And I also do want to see more of the aftermath after things were exposed, but I did like what we did get in the epilogue. This is definitely a book that you want to pick up if you want an intense mystery and that has really important underlying messages. So if you're interested in that, I would recommend Ace of Spades. And my next book is a fantasy book and I picked up Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Carver. I rate this one a 3.75 out of five stars. This book is following the Caraval original trilogy and I think it is better to pick up that trilogy before you dive into this one, but I don't think it's necessary. This book was a really strong start to a new duology, and we also get a lot of the nice fun elements from the Caraval trilogy in this one, including the magic, the extravagant clothing, and the romance. This book also has really fun cameos from the Caraval characters, and we get to see a lot of the fates again. There's also great twists and turns. It's quite fast-paced, and there's also use of prophecies and fairy tales. We dive right into the story of Evangeline Fox. We meet Jax when Evangeline is trying to make a deal to have him stop a wedding with the love of her life who is then trying to marry her stepsister so she wants to make a deal with Jax to stop that marriage from happening. However, that doesn't really go the way she thought it would and she learns that making a deal with an immortal has a lot more risk than benefit. Eventually, as her heroine, is one who dreams of a love that lasts forever. And she is someone that I would describe as being a hopeless romantic. But at times, she is overly naive and although presented with proper information and proper evidence in front of her eyes, she still continues to doubt. And with that, it did make some parts of her character a little bit hard to read through since there was a lot of obvious things happening in front of her and she makes note of it in her mind, but then she doesn't believe it to be true. I don't think she's just naive, but she's one that puts a lot of faith in people and in the faith of those characters being better than they actually are. However, this behavior of Evangeli does get better throughout the book and I really hope this character development will continue in book two. But getting onto Jax, who is now back in this book, and I really loved his antics and how he's pretty much the same fate from Caraval. How he's charming, he still has that careless appearance about him, and he's heartbroken because he's the Prince of Broken Hearts. There are really fun hints with the growing tension between Jax and Evangeline in this book that I really was having fun reading through. Some scenes in this book really did feel kind of random and confusing how there were vampires tossed in at one point of the book, but it did come together by the end of the book. I just felt that some events happening in this book were just happening just because. But I am still curious to see how this story will conclude in book two. And I don't know if there will be a book free, but I hope not because I don't think I could take another slow, boring second book. 
But yes, I still really enjoyed this world and I was happy to get back into it. So the last book I read in July was Heartbones by Carleen Hoover and I rated this one a 4.5 out of 5 stars. Heartbones is a romance book that starts off with our character Bea learning about her mother who has died of an overdose. And from there she contacts her father for help and Bea finds herself now living the rest of her summer on a Texan peninsula in a beach house. And she's waiting until she could go to college, but she doesn't want anything to ruin her summer and she's just hoping to get by until she could go to college. But then a summer fling happens with the next door neighbor, Samson, who is mysterious and rich. With other Colleen Hoover books that I have read, they are emotionally charged and Heartbones is not an exception to that. This one speaks on don't judge a book by its cover. You truly never know what's really going on in someone's life. But yeah, and Samson, they appear to be polar opposites, but what lies on the surface can be vastly different of what's beneath. With Bea, she comes from a rough childhood and she's dealing with what life has handed to her. She's, she came to say hello. So like what I was saying, Bea comes from a rough childhood and she is dealing with what life has handed to her. She does manage to keep herself afloat while going throughout her childhood. At the beach house, this relationship begins with gaining each other's trust and that happens slowly, but they have a really strong connection with each other and that's quite instantaneous. But I don't think it develops in, in, to anything more than platonic until Bea says that she's ready. And I really like the lessons that came out of their relationship of being with each other and uh, learning about each other. One of that being being resilient to what life has handed to you, learning to become vulnerable again, and also giving a chance to people, giving a second chance to people when no one else has given them any chances. There was a moment when I was reading about Samson and Bea's interactions, I was like, um, I'm not feeling Samson too much and I did feel him being a little bit off and it did come off to me as being a little bit manipulative of not really telling Bea of his background. I understand why he didn't share so much of himself that straight on. Bea does give him the benefit of the doubt and that trust and that gut instinct of hers does pay off for her in the long run and of what she sees value within Samson. Heartbones is a romance book that deals with heavier topics such as addiction and grief and loss but we also learn about trusting your heart and believing in others, which I think is a nice balance. I know Colleen Hoover does have some questionable books on her backlist, but I think Heartbones is one that is one of the stand-up ones, and I do highly recommend this one if you're interested. I am quite happy about how much I've read this month. Also, the variety of genres that I managed to read as well. I've noticed I've been reading a lot more adult books than YA books, but I still love YA fantasy, but I am branching out into other genres, which is, I would say, a good thing. I'm going to conclude this video now, so thank you so much for watching. If you wish to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button down below, and don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and ring that notification bell to not miss any future uploads. I'll see y'all soon.